If a picture is worth a thousand words, people are worth so many more. Did you know that downtown Vancouver used to have a Japan town? And that there were significant Japanese Canadian settlements throughout British Columbia, including rural areas and fishing hamlets? Few vestiges of that once distinctive Japanese presence exist today. During the war, the Canadian government interned the majority of Japanese Canadian citizens in prison camps in the interior of British Columbia and in Ontario, and forcibly sold their property. What happened to these people? Their homes, farms, boats, cars, furniture, and other possessions. How was this injustice allowed to take place? The Landscapes of Injustice project, funded by a Shirk Partnership grant, explores the dispossession, displacement, and internment of Japanese Canadians during World War II. Our team at Ryerson University addresses these questions through the practice of oral history. The oral history research cluster of the Landscapes Project is unique in that we're not only going to be interviewing the Japanese Canadians who directly experienced the internment, but we want to understand how they passed on their memories of internment and how their memories of internment were interpreted by their children by their children's children. So we're going to be looking at multiple generations of uh, Japanese Canadians. As well, we're going to be interviewing other people who were involved in this period of history. We're going to be interviewing those who were bystanders. The core of the Landscapes of Injustice project is based at the University of Victoria under principal investigator, Dr. Jordan Stenger Ross. And multiple research clusters at institutions across Canada are looking at different angles of this story. Led by Dr. Pamela Sugiman, the oral history research cluster at Ryerson University collects personal stories of individuals who have had direct experience with the dispossession of Japanese Canadian property. The internment happened to Japanese Canadians uh, many decades ago, but uh, the same sort of treatment could be meted out to other groups within Canada today. Uh, for example, Arab Canadians, um, Indigenous peoples. These are other communities that we want to connect to. This history matters profoundly because members of Canadian society continue to be unjustly marginalized today. Canada must address the difficult moments from our past in order to move forward to create a truly inclusive, welcoming country.